Hello, everyone. Hi, Deirdre. Welcome. Hello, Martin. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the DM show. Yes, another month, another episode, and uh, we're really excited uh, for today's show because uh, we've got a guest who is an expert on so many different areas. That's true. And today's topic, relationships through earned digital media, trust. Martin, we've been talking about this for years. So I just think that this is a topic that especially now with everything that's going on and how noisy it is to be trusted and to get attention, Winnie Sun is the perfect guest. <laughs> yes. And so, of course, we would love um, for all of you to participate. Any questions, comments you have, let us know. And also let us know um, when you join us, where you're from. Uh, Hi, Kamish. Welcome. And uh, why don't we bring on Winnie now? That would be awesome. Joining us today is Winnie Sun. She's a managing director at Sun Group, Group Wealth Partners, and she's one of the most trusted financial voices on social media. You may know Winnie. She is a Forbes contributor. She appears on different shows, including Good Day Los Angeles, and she has two shows herself. She's the host of Yes Factor, which is a podcast, and she's also the host of Level Up with Winnie Sun on NASDAQ and different streaming platforms. Winnie is a LinkedIn learning instructor, like Martin and myself, and she just has a wealth of knowledge. So we're gonna have Winnie join us. I encourage you to check Winnie out, her profile on LinkedIn and connect to her, but let's get Winnie in the broadcast. Hello. Hello, Deirdre and Martin. It's so great to be here with you. It's great to have you, Winnie. Well, we've been so excited to talk to you about earned media and relationship building because today it feels like it's it's more difficult than ever before because of how noisy it is. So welcome and we're going to dive in. Sounds great. Yeah, so I'm going to just get started with um, the first question, which is, you know, you built so many relationships with different types of media, traditional and digital over the years. How easy or difficult is it to build a relationship with digital media today, given everything that's happening, all the clutter out there? Well, Martin, I feel like that's such a good question because you're right. With so much noise, so many more people on social media creating new original content constantly, how do you stand out? And I want to bring it sort of back because my nine-year-old actually this week, he's been kind of having a bad week because literally he lost his best friend. So his best friend and them, they're not getting along very well. I'm not sure exactly why, but he came to me and he said, mommy, like, I need to make a new best friend. How do I make a new friend? And I think, you know, those principles sort of are the same as making friends on digital media. Sometimes we sort of overthink things, but at the end of the day, I said, you know, what is it that you value in a friend? What, what do you, who do you gravitate in real life? That's who you want to try to find, right? That's the, you have the highest potential to sort of keep that relationship long term. So it's sort of like digital dating, if you will, but you're looking for relationships that are going to be professional, meaning that these are people that maybe you have something in common, maybe it's an interest, maybe something that you studied, maybe, um, you know, maybe geography, it could be a, a number of things. But What's, what's really beautiful about digital media and my experience has been like differences is what actually brings us together. And what I love about that is you can meet so many more people more quickly that you probably would never have met in person because like all of us, if we do speaking events and whatnot, you know, you only have time for so many people, but on digital, you can meet them more quickly and you can also differentiate a good relationship from one that probably isn't going to last much more quickly as well. Well, Winnie, you've built many great relationships throughout your career. And I would love it if you could just share a little bit about how you built your community, because it really stands out. You have a community on Twitter, you're on LinkedIn. What are some of the ways that you actually built 
relationships, taking the advice that you gave to your son and, and doing it professionally. Sure. Thank you, Deirdre. Well, I think, you know, when I first started, it was hard. I, I am an extreme introvert. I'm not talking like a sort of introvert, like I'm talking extreme, meaning that like if a lot of people come to my house, I actually have to go to a quiet room to like decompress for a little bit. So social media worked really well for me because I was able to work on my time, meet relationships one-on-one, -on -one, and it was less intimidating. And, um, you know, it started with one, started bit by bit. I remember uh, when I first, my first, uh, social media platform was LinkedIn, created a profile, and then so I started first connecting with people that I already knew. But I also knew the importance of creating um, relationships with circles of influence. So circles of influence are people or individual communities which are led by certain people. So dear Jen and Martin, you both are great examples of this, right? Each of you has a specialty. People trust you. You're highly, highly professional. You have all these designations. Your communities trust you. So if I meet you and we get along, there's a good chance that the people that you're connected to, I would like them as well. And we would connect well. So what I started doing on social is first looking for uh, centers of influence, doing a lot of due diligence on the person themselves, where they're from, what they like, you know, um, and, and see what they share so that if that voice sort of match mine, which is I'm all about positivity while being kind to one another. And I really like really, really smart people who are dependable, who who also retain very long relationships. I tend to keep all my relationships for a really long time. My business partner, we've been business partners for 20 plus years. My husband, 20 plus years, you know, all these relationships, really, really long time. Um, so I think that's key. When you're first starting, look for certain centers of influence. It's really interesting. Can you talk a little bit more about centers of influence? So how one, how would you find them? That's the first part of that. And the second thing is like, how do I know which centers of influence, if, you know, I'm looking to build my profile are of interest to me? Sure. Well, so what I did is I had a, at the time I was working for a major financial firm called Smith Barney, which is part of Citigroup, which eventually got bought out by Morgan Stanley. I had moved from Los Angeles where I was sort of based. And then I moved to another office in Orange County in Southern California here. I knew nobody in this area that I moved to, but it was really important as a financial advisor to have potential clients and, you know, to, that's how we build our practice. So what I did is I just did a quick Google search. Maybe it wasn't even Google at the time, but you know what I mean? So Google search and I look for like, you know, the, the most influential people in Orange County or, or something like that. Right. And so certain people popped up and there was one woman who popped up over and over again. And her name was Greer Wider. She actually owned a commute, uh, a newsletter called uh, Greer's OC, which she still runs now. She's she's an amazing friend of mine. So I see her on social. I see the things that she posts and she's beautiful, blonde. Like she's just like, she looks like, she looks like Barbie, right? And I'm like, I don't know. I might be too geeky for her. I'm not sure. <laughs> Those who like me. Well, it's interesting. I also found another person who's also like mover and shaker in Orange County, also beautiful, also looks, um, you know, um, but she she's not blonde. She's a brunette. She's beautiful, too. And she happens to be a restaurant publicist. And so all the restaurants in Orange County all seem to be her clients. I'm like, oh, she's also a good person to meet. So somehow I go on social, I find her, and I start to communicate with some of her clients, and then we become friends. And then I find out she's best friends with Greer. <laughs> and then, you know, but I had already started studying them, and I was like, these are really great people that I would love to meet. And eventually I got to meet Greer in person. We actually connected because she is also a really extreme, she's an introvert, but you would never know because on social, she looks like a beast. Um, <laughs> but, so we we connected on that and it was just really, you know, being really proactive of not waiting for things to come to you. And that's what I always say about social media. Like your LinkedIn profile, as you know, is life, right? Because it is working for you 24 seven, whether you're hanging out with the kids or you're you know hanging out by the pool, your LinkedIn profile is saying, hey, 
I'm open. I'm looking to make relationships. Maybe I'm looking for business. And if you want to reach out and learn more about me, hey, you can see through what I'm doing and things like that. So social media is life. And I think what I decided early on is to really build uh, impactful profiles and as many social media platforms as would make sense for my business. So LinkedIn, of course, is my one of my primaries, Twitter as well. And just making sure that I keep it active. But I also said this back in the day. Um, I said, you know, it's really important that your profile is like magnetic, meaning that when someone comes to your profile, if they even get to a point where they see your profile, make sure that like they like can't wait to connect with you. And if your profile doesn't do that, then you need to keep working on it. And and I'm not saying put things that are not true, but I'm saying that maybe you update your photo, maybe you app update it. So it just becomes a little bit more user friendly. So if you're a you know a more serious professional, that's got to reflect. If you're a warmer person, that's got to reflect too. So that way you literally don't have to be in front of the keyboard 24 seven, but actually that could uh, help generate new new connections as well. And Winnie, this is a good pivot because having that profile that looks dynamic and wants somebody to connect with, what do you think about the media? When the media, when, when somebody pitches, wouldn't the media go and look and research? A journalist would look at a profile. What do you think a media professional cares about? I think the media professionals are so busy. You know, if you if you've ever worked with a reporter, you know they're juggling like five stories a week, especially the top tier outlets, right? So I do do regular commentary on CNBC, on Today Show, on Good Day LA, and these are really top tier outlets, and they're really busy, and they can't take a chance of putting a sub you know subpar guest on their networks. This is key. So I try to do is I try to make their lives as easy as possible. And what I mean by that is I don't go and hound them. I mean, that's not what I do. But what I do do is I, I will, when it's you know appropriate, I'll connect with them or they'll connect with me. And I will make it so that they know that I'm covering or talking about or thinking about or know very, very well the, the topic that they're you know working on right now. Perfect example, this week, right? Mm. Um, I created a video on Monday about the Silicon Valley um, bank fiasco, the bank collapse. And so that actually followed. I did an interview already with Fox on Monday, but then I created my own video, you know, and I put it up and it was very clear that I knew my stuff. And from that, I had plenty of people reach out, whether it be LinkedIn or through my website or through all the other platforms saying, hey, we need you on your show, I mean, our show, or can we interview you for our article or this story? So, you know, I think if you're looking for media coverage, you got to do your work ahead of time. You don't pitch yourself. You make it known that you're an expert in the space and you're trustworthy and they, they can see the product before they reach out to you of what you're going to deliver on their show. That's a really, really good point and, yeah. and great advice for everybody. And it's really thinking ahead or thinking two or three steps ahead. Stories breaking, does it fit with your expertise? And if it does, how can you newsjack, to use David uh, Meerman Scott's word, or you know, become part of that story in a way that helps people? Just before we go to the next question, just want to uh, welcome everyone who's here. We have people from all over from Puerto Rico, Fayetteville, North Carolina, um, India. From Ontario. From Ontario, former student of mine, I saw that. Uh, Southern Africa, South um, Africa. Fort Worth, um, Texas. Rut Rutgers, uh, Winnipeg, Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. So uh, really nice to see everyone and thank you for joining us. And if you do have any questions, pop them into the chat and we will... Uh, try to get to them. So I think, you know, our social media community numbers, so the big numbers, important um, when you're building relationships with digital media outlets. So do you need to have the big numbers in order for them to notice you or are there other um, tips you can offer? 
Martin, it's a great question. I actually do think it helps significantly, right? So I do run um, the largest business tweet chat on social media. We average 100, 150 million impressions per week. So it's massive. You know, we definitely uh, eclipse most television shows. And when, so do I do arrive on a television show, I bring the audience with me. So that's helpful. But I think it's not, I mean, I think it, you can build the audience on the back end as well. The, the key thing you have to remember is the media is looking for credible sources that aren't going to make them look bad and actually can bring a, another perspective and a new audience to them as well. And, you know, I think what I would say is, I know Deirdre and I've talked about this before, is it's like there has a kind of a mindset shift. When you go on television or you get interviewed, remember that it is a privilege for us to be on that show. So we need to do whatever we can to help that show or that reporter, um, you know, do, you know, bring out the most information as possible to help the audience. Because if we bring value, like concrete examples, and um, I have, Deirdre and I have, know a very good friend of mine, you know, I have an incredible publicist has, who has trained me um, for years on how to do a better job with this. I would say that, yeah, this is something you have to earn, you have to work at, and you have to bring the best every time. And if you do, the beautiful thing is they will come and look for you, right? The first time is harder, but because of LinkedIn, which is awesome, you have a natural audience that you could create content with on the fly every day if you wanted to. And I would suggest that. Like um, how I got comfortable being on camera is actually – just literally doing live stream as much as possible. Yeah. And that was it. And during the pandemic, I decided I committed to doing live stream every single day on the first year of the pandemic. And that helped a lot. That's amazing. I think also when it comes to building a relationship, especially with the media, don't give up it just because you're not recognized maybe right away don't follow up 20 times and annoy anybody. But if something is relevant, keep sharing. And sometimes, I mean, I've noticed over my career that maybe somebody doesn't respond the first time or the second time, but three's a charm. <laughs> and then they say, hey, this is a great topic and let's get you on a show. So I do think it's remembering that it takes time with building any relationship with anyone and also Winnie, on that note, when you're pitched, because you have two shows, what gets your attention when somebody's trying to build a relationship with you and wants to be on your show? So what 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 should the pitch look like? So good question. I think, you know, we get so many emails every day from all things of randomness. But I would say that the most the thing that makes most sense to me is when they say, I watch your show. And I can tell they actually watch my show in the pitch. And then they say like, um, and I also am including a clip of my guest or my client. Usually it's a publicist that reach out. I want to see that video clip. Don't make me reply and ask you to send me a video clip because I, you know, the show is a video show. I mean, even my podcast, which is on the LinkedIn podcast network, it's also a live stream show that we then take the audio and put on the LinkedIn podcast network. Right. But, um, everything starts at video and my audience, uh, likes to see who it is that they're listening to as well. So show me what that looks like. And I want to see how they speak and how they answer questions. And if, you know, they're nice people, all these things. So I would say is you just remember that the person that you're trying to pitch is getting pitched probably a few hundred times a day or a week. And so to stand out, make their lives as easy as possible. And also make sure that it's personal. Don't just put me a MailChimp and send me things constantly because that's like an instant spam. <laughs> we don't have, nobody has time for that. And it slows down our email and it crashes our computer. So that's not very nice. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really think one step ahead. So here's your pitch. What else can you do? to make it easy for the person mm -hmm. at the other end. We have a question uh, from Nico, who is a startup founder. What are your opinions on common newswire platforms like PR web when it comes to becoming authoritative and growing your network? And he says, thank you for uh, being here. So what do you think of uh, some of the newswires? 
So in my experience, they can be helpful when maybe you're talking about a new book right, or a new course, something like that, where you just want to get the word out quickly. Um, it, it, I don't do much of that, to be honest with you, with my team. We really do focus more on, on building social media because social media followers or communities, they're sort of you know, they made a decision that they would follow you. So they tend to be a little bit more loyal. And um, I like to build it organically. I think it's a good combination to have both, but I would be mindful of budget, right? I mean, we, like when I started off, I didn't have like a ton of money and I just built it organically. Um, you know, one thing to remember too, when it comes to building relationships on social, it's not just about following people, it's actually engaging with pe people. So the easiest way I can say this is like, let's say, for example, on LinkedIn, right? If you like something that's posted, that's like walking by someone and just sort of tapping on the shoulder and just moving on. That's kind of nice, but it's not that nice, right? Instead, if you make a comment, that's like me coming over to Martin and Deirdre and like, hey, buddies, and hugging them. <laughs> because I've taken that effort to make the comment to say like, I see you and I'm here to support you because I'm one of your people. And I think that's key. If we consistently do that in the beginning, I was doing something called what I call breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I would go through my day before the kids woke up. I do 15 minutes in social and then lunchtime, 15 minutes. And then after kids went down on to sleep in the evenings, I would then do a little bit more on social. So find people that are in the space that you're interested in. And it's as simple as saying like, that's great. I really enjoyed your article or that comment. Yeah, that's great that you posted that. I just want to wish you a great day. And then it, and then if you do that consistently, I wouldn't say doing this like, you know, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. Do I have over 300,000 followers on Twitter? Yes. But that's not like, not like I'm talking to all of them constantly, right? It's probably about 100, 150 that I'm most active with. Um, so it's about finding that, creating a go very quick Google spreadsheet um, on, you know, create a list and then comment and just being there when they need you. So I know Deirdre and I do this very organically. If I need her support, I know to tag her. And she does the same with me. And we know just because we've never actually talked about it. We just know that we're going to be there for each other. So if you have that enough times, you will build your community more quickly than even that that news, you know, thing that you shoot out. Because to be honest with you, reporters want that more trustworthy relationship as well. And every connection I think is that way as well. That's a great point. I call it an engagement hug. Yeah. <laughs> talking about Winnie. Engagement hug. An engagement hug. Hashtag engagement hug. <laughs> On the note of news wires, one benefit, and um, I agree that it, you always have to have a balance or maybe you are even lean more organically towards social media, especially if you're small. But there is something about the way the search engines index a release, be selective over what you share over the wire. But that is a way so that when customers or anyone is searching for you, the, the news release tends to pop to the top of the feed. And it's a good way for a company to get their messaging and what they're sharing across and, and people can find that. Yeah, especially for startups too. For startups or when you have news in a story, but if you're just posting something on the wire in the same way, if you're just creating a piece of content that is generic, doesn't really say much. Right. You're yeah. not. People aren't going to see you one as an expert, but two, they're they're not going to necessarily trust you. They're going to think, you know, to your point, Winnie, of all those pitches you're getting, they're just spamming me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, the most valuable relationships are ones you don't pay for. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, Winnie, if you were to rate authenticity of the relationships today on, on social media, do you think that professionals are learning to be more authentic and to build the right way? Or are you seeing more of the, hi, how are you? Try my product. You know, um, that's that's a great question. I think for me, I definitely see more of the sincere relationships, probably because that's who I seek out. And those are the pro most active members of my community. Um, certainly on cer certain platforms, there's going to be more spammy, like 
DMs than ever, right? We we see that on all the different platforms. I know I get a ton on, on Instagram, but like, I think it's who you seek out. It's just really, you can quickly delete out and you can filter. I mean, you can tell when someone misspells your name or like they don't even use your name that it's probably spam. But then as you, as you regularly, it's like pruning your garden. The more you prune out the, the spammy stuff, then it gives chance for those more intimate um, real relationships to pop up, right? But I do think it's very, very important to remember that you get what you put in, all right? Mm -hmm. So if you're waiting for people to reach out, I always say, I used to say this, this is, you know, this will show like how long this has been. I used to say, you know what? The phone works both ways, all right? If I can text you and I can call you, you can call me and you can text me too. So, but I think that we have the responsibility to reach out regularly and we got to find ways to do it. I'm going to share a quick story because I think it's really powerful. Um, so when I was a kid, right, my mom was like, she didn't speak a lot of English, but she was like an like an awesome networker. And I didn't really realize this, but it used to bug me and my sister so much growing up. So every holiday, whether it be Christmas or New Year's or something else, right? She'd be plopped on the sofa and she would pull out her like her like planner thingy and it had everybody's phone number written in pencil and was like all crazy. And she would sit there and call every single person and wish them a happy new year, happy Christmas. Literally, we would not see her like all New Year's and Christmas. Like, we had a holiday. Like, mom, like, okay. But here's the thing. She didn't speak a lot of English, but she was in a real estate industry. And literally, she never had to prospect a day in her life. All she would do is just sit there and say happy birthday or happy Christmas, whatever, to people. Like very generic and just like, oh, how are you doing? How are the kids? And stuff like that. And she never mentioned her business. And, oh. she, and and like literally the whole year, it would feed her the whole year. This person needs a rental. This person needs to sell house. And it would all come to her. And so I've kind of done the more modern version of that, if you will. So what I try to do is like on uh, major holidays, I actually just try to text people. Dum, 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 you know, so I can actually spend some time with my family. But it's really important. you got to find... Um, create patterns so that they're repeatable and that way people don't fall through the cracks. So you got to find ways that works within your system. Uh, but I would just say that consistency is key and out of mind means out of opportunity. That's true. And you know what? First of all, your mom was a great role model. <laughs> it She's kind of crazy too, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I think that people also have to recognize that every time you have an opportunity to connect and whether you're on the phone or you are texting, you're building rapport that never stops. So that speaks to the consistency that you just mentioned. Yeah. Relationships are uh, long term for sure. We are coming to the end of our half hour. So I'm just going to ask you, Winnie, um, if you have any final words of advice on how to build, how to start building those trusted relationships with digital media and, and you know, nurturing them over the long term. Jill Martin, I love this question. I'm going to just tell you this. I think it starts with knowing yourself, having self-awareness. Take a moment to find out, write down who you are. And what, it's, what are your most important things in your life? What do you resonate, right? And write these things. What, what do you think people think of you when they think of you? And then go to maybe your best friend or someone who's honest, but, you know, who isn't just going to sugarcoat everything and, and ask them to say how you reflect and let them write it down. Then when these things match up, which of these match up, make sure to bring that odd authenticity to everything that you do so that that helps you resonate with other people. Because what you don't want is to create this like facade of what you think will attract the media or other people. It's very short lived. You really need to put your true self out there and, and practice always sharing your true self, but of course in a positive way. And that way it's easy to maintain your relationships and you don't ever feel like you're a fraud. You don't feel like the things that you say are authentic. And you never have to worry of if you meet somebody, you know, in line at Costco and they saw something that you posted or something back in the day, like, or you had your assistant post or something, you don't have those things happen. So handle your own social, know yourself and be comfortable sharing your true self. And most importantly, remember, 
it's totally okay to walk away from social media for days, weeks, or even months, and to, to get in a good headspace and then come back when you're ready because the people that care about you, that truly care about you, that will bring you clients and bring you business, they want you to be okay. They don't need you like to feel icky. They want you long-term. Oh, great advice. Get your true self out there and walk away when you need to. Mm -hmm. Be your best you. Excellent. Well, Winnie, thank you so much yeah. for all of your advice. Thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate both of you. I love you both. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you so much. And thank thanks you. to everyone for joining us today. We will be back again in uh, April. With yes. another guest, Winnie, thank you again so much. This has been great. And uh, Deirdre, see you next yes. month. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everybody. That's a wrap. Take Bye. care. <laughs>